No other institution has so much unchecked power. The Fed demonstrated its unlimited authority during the pandemic. The Fed printed money, purchased government-backed securities, and doled out massive amounts of money to favored industries. The result added almost $5 trillion to the Fed's balance sheet, the largest in our history. When Dodd-Frank ordered a limited one-time audit of Fed actions, the Government Accountability Office uncovered that during the financial crisis, the Fed doled out over $16 trillion to domestic and foreign banks. This kind of inflationary bailout should not be kept secret from the public. While the Fed's easy money policies make the rich richer, the side effect is high inflation. As Milton Friedman famously explained, inflation is taxation without legislation. Congress cannot control the Fed's actions, but Fed actions can cost Americans dearly. Just ask any parent who has to feed his or her family during historically high inflation rates. My amendment would require a full audit of the Fed within one year. It is time for the Federal Reserve to operate in a manner that is transparent and accountable to the taxpayers. I ask for a yes vote. Senator from Ohio. Mr. President, I rise today speak in opposition to the Paul Amendment. Members of both parties have always agreed an independent, underscore independent central bank is critical to a functioning economy. Congress put in place a restriction to shield the Fed's monetary policy from political influence. This longstanding restriction ensures that the Fed isn't subject to the whims of Congress, to the partisanship, to the nihilism, if I could use another word, of too often people in this body. Whether it's threatening a default or a government shutdown, all too common because of dysfunction uh, and uh, chaos in the House of Representatives, whether it's th threatening a default or a government shutdown, we've already seen how partisanship so negatively impacts people's pocketbooks in the broader economy. We don't need it here, too. This amendment would make the Fed less effective. It would open it up to all kinds of nefarious political pressure. Congress already requires that the Fed undergo regular review of their operations, of their programs, of their balance sheet, of their financial statements. These are some of the ways Congress holds the Fed accountable while avoiding dangerous political interference. This amendment's irrelevant to what we we're voting on today. is yet another impediment to keeping our government open. It shouldn't be partisan. It shouldn't be political. Those antics should stay out of this dis debate. I urge my colleagues to vote no on the Paul Amendment, and I yield the floor. Friends, this is not good. Please make sure that you watch out for this. Many states are once again falling behind on processing SNAP benefit checks. This is leading to new backlog for thousands of Americans. And lawmakers are beginning to push for an immediate solution. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video, especially if you receive monthly benefits. Also, friends, to say thank you for being part of this community. Tomorrow and every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more video that you watch and then comment our friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. More than a year after the Alaska Division of Public Assistance first fell behind on processing food stamp benefits for thousands of Alaskans. The state agency is again reporting lengthy delays for new and returning applicants. As of this week, approximately 6,000 Alaska residents who had applied for benefits this past summer and fall are still waiting on critical food aid from the federally funded SNAP program which in Alaska is processed and distributed by the State Division of Public Assistance. The new backlog was created as a result of the state directing the majority of its staff and resources to clearing older backlog in applications from Alaska residents who in some cases have been waiting as long as 11 months for their benefits to be dispersed. According to local reporters, the agency was directed in August by officials from the Federal Food and Nutrition Service 
to prioritize the older applications first, even if it meant that newer applications may get neglected. According to local reporters, the agency was directed in August by officials from the Food and Nutrition Service to prioritize the older applications first, even if it meant that newer applications might get neglected. The new backlog is causing more ripples of need across the state. In Alaska, more than 92,000 people rely on SNAP benefits. About a third are children, and most have incomes below the federal poverty line. The waiting game continues for thousands of Georgia families who need their SNAP benefits to feed their families. And one lawmaker is ready for immediate action. Democratic Representative Kim Schofield has said she is fielding calls and emails from constituents who are hurting as they try to get answers about their food benefits to no avail. The SNAP benefits backlog has also impacted Georgia families on and off for a year now. As the Georgia Department of Human Services struggles to process cases within federal guidelines. Since January, the state has hired more than 900 caseworkers, but there is no timeline for fixing the backlog. 400 staff are already transitioned to the new platform, with the remaining teams set to be moved over the next two months. The state also continues to offer overtime and stipends to increase caseload capacity and focus on the oldest renewals first. Also friends, Wells Fargo is now warning that the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes could trigger a housing market recession that echoes the slowdown of the 1980s. The central bank has signaled in recent months that it will keep borrowing costs at an even higher level for longer, well into 2024 in a bid to try and quell inflation. And according to the bank, that will fuel declines in both construction and activity. Economist Charlie Daughtry and Patrick Barley wrote in a research note last week. After generally improving in the first half of 2023, the residential sector now appears to be contracting alongside the recent move in higher mortgage rates. Although mortgage rates may gradually descend once the Federal Reserve begins to ease monetary policy, financing costs are likely to remain elevated relative to recent norms. They also stated that a higher for longer interest rate environment would likely not only weigh on demand, but would also constrain supply by reducing new construction and discouraging prospective sellers. The average 30-year fixed rate mortgage has climbed from under 4% to just shy of 8% since the Fed started tightening in March 2022, encouraging many existing homeowners to stay put to cling to historically low rates that they had previously locked in. Just 1% of Americans sold their houses over the first half of 2023. The National Association of Realtors, Mortgage Bankers Association, and National Association of Home Builders sent the Fed's Board of Governors earlier this month. The National Association of Realtors, Mortgage Bankers Association, and the National Association of Home Builders sent a letter to the Fed's Board of Governors earlier this month. The three groups called Chair Jerome Powell to make clear that he was calling time on the bank's current rate hiking campaign. Well, dear friends, what are your thoughts on the current housing market? please let me know in the comments section below. Dear friends, thank you so much for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.